SABC is a state-owned television and radio network. Started in 1936 as a radio monopoly, SABC grew to be a television network in 1976. After the 1994 democratic election, the SABC was now under ANC rule. Since then, we've received programming aimed at the black community. SABC One was aimed at the black youth, with Friday late nights being dedicated to shows resembling party entertainment and nightlife, with the production being held by Urban Brew Studio. Castle Loud was the first show to take the time slot with the nightlife format. After having been cancelled in 2003, One, presented by Andy Lengube, took over until 2007 when it was rebranded to Live, then later renamed to Live Amp. Andile was still the host, but super South African megastar to be was introduced, Bonang Mateba. After going through a myriad of presenters, for the purposes of this video, we'll stop in 2014 when the eventual hosts were DJ Waras, Pearl Tusi, and Lutando or Loot Love. The show is a rundown of entertainment moments, news, and hotspots. It showcases groundbreaking artists by providing interviews, event reviews, and live performances. On the 15th of August, 2014, two particular hip hop artists were booked to perform. Longtime favorite and South African megastar, AKA, and new hot commodity, Casper Nuvest. Born on the 28th of January, 1988, in Cape Town, Western Cape, Keenan Jared Forbes grew up in Johannesburg's North Side. At the age of 15, he received his first taste of fame after forming the group Entity with friends Vice Verse and Greyhound. They released their first single, First Gear, but really rose to SA hip hop prominence after the release of their second single, Touch and Go, which had the biggest hip hop group in South Africa at the time in the music video, Squatter Camp. The group split and AKA ventured into a solo career. After partnering up with Tibbs from the ALS parties, AKA went on to release the first single, Victory Lab. This was the first song to really put AKA on the map as it premiered on the new youth oriented Vuzu channel. For the next two years, he would release a slew of hits until his debut album, Alter Ego, was released. The hits on the album included the Victory Lap remix, All I Know, I Want It All, and Bang. All these songs cemented AKA's name within the South African media. He became a genre-bending superstar after the release of Jealousy at the end of 2012. 2013, he would announce that he was working on a new album. The album would incorporate house and hip-hop elements together. Starting his ill-fated bromance with Ali S, he released his first single in April of that year, which was followed up by Deleuze's return smash featuring AKA, Heaven. I'm first to death in this motherfucker I ask a question I'm innocent Now can you parallel in this motherfucker The video, which was shot by AMR Singh, was the most talked about video within the hip hop sphere. The community was campaigning for a video of the year award. I mean, it was. Okay. The video was sleek and at the beginning of it stylish. It had Let's dumb it down so they understand. Hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, it had an upper class background which was white, dope production, and it uh, Middle finger to my exes! Ish. Born on the 16th of December 1990, Reconciliation Day, Rifilwe Pullo was born and raised in Mafikeng, Northwest. He would alternate between Mafikeng and Promosa which was where he would ultimately meet Boyd. 
While on the come up, he'd meet up with his childhood idol and SA hip hop legend, Double HP. Double HP quickly took a liking into the rapper, featuring him on his 2009 hit, Wam To. He would then also take him with to show. I don't want to go too much into Casper's come up. I'd be repeating myself because I broke the whole come up down in a video right here. So Casper drops the song Kusheshe and the music video is fire. In fact, the song itself is blasting through the airwaves. Even AKA in 2020 would admit that Kusheshe was his favorite song by Casper. So much so in fact, that Casper would find himself working with AKA. From the information that I found, it looks like their friendship started around 2011. Kulichana has admitted not knowing who Casper was until AKA put him onto him. The guy who put me on Casper music was Keenan. <laughs> it was AKA. He was like, yo, you need to, yo, you need to hear this dude. He's from your, he's from your, he's from your hometown. And, this and 2011 is the same year Casper debuted on a Muff Tine Hout stage. I'm not able to find any communication between them before 2011, which gets me to my next point. They knew each other before AKA would release his album. AKA was buzzing within the mainstream media, but hadn't cemented himself as the super mega yet. They met while both of them were actually on the come up. Granted, AKA had Victory Lap and a couple other hits on radio. They were actually close friends. I mean, super close. I mean, AKA would call Casper at 4 a.m. in the morning just to scream, turn up. They were close enough that AKA invited Casper to his house and cooked for him. This is a picture taken by Casper of AKA on this particular day. Okay, I've stopped the music because the inner fanboy in me needs a moment before I say the next sentence. They have a song called Sia Groova. Look, at this point, if there's one thing that I would love to do in my life before I die, it's hear AKA and Casper on the same song. I can't even contain myself. Everybody who watches this video should use the hashtag on Twitter, Free Sia Groover. I know I'm still a small channel, but I will inevitably grow. And I believe that if each one of us who's watching this video had to spam this hashtag on Twitter, we would irritate the shit out of them enough to release the hidden gem of a song. These are the people who are around these artists around this time. Tweet them at least once a week with this hashtag. Run their comments up. Don't let them rest on Twitter until we find this unicorn. Free Sia Groover. In the beginning of 2013, Casper would perform Kusheshe at his show. There were rumblings about a song so crazy from a young artist within the industry. In fact, Anati would tweet this. AKA would drop his much anticipated Control featuring the LES and this would be AKA song to plaster him in the mainstream. Which Casper would also tweet out in promotion for AKA. About two weeks later, on the 19th of April 2013, Casper would drop Gusheshe featuring Malum Kulkat. AKA would... Mize the link? I mean, there's no evidence that AKA had shared Casper's Gusheshe. At all. To a point that Casper tweeted this. I can't say if the tweet was directed at AKA specifically, but it definitely caught AKA's attention. I think he had put out his video or something, and then the next day he had gone off about, um, you know how he is, I don't get the support, you know, nobody's really holding me down. At this point, the communication between AKA and Casper stops. Control would have the initial hype and was coupled with heaven because AKA was the bigger artist. However, Gusheshe would ravish the streets once the music video was dropped. The moment of truth would arrive on the 20th of November 2013, the South African 
Hip Hop Awards. Casper would go on to win four SA Hip Hop Awards, including Record of the Year and Video of the Year, beating out both Heaven and Control. At the same awards ceremony, AKA would receive one award for MVP. The public wasn't yet privy to the fact that AKA and Casper had a friendship at all, and this definitely had to sting. AKA had to redeem himself in 2014, so he decided to switch up his strategy. Casper would release his next single, Doc Shebeleza, on free to host platform, That's a Foul Host. Capitalizing on his mainstream popularity, AKA would release his next song, Congratulate, on iTunes. This would put him at the top of the charts for weeks, and dare I say, even months. Congratulate would stay at the top of the charts, but Casper's song also would have its own marketing strategy when it amassed 100,000 downloads. This would start a cold war amongst the friends of who had the better song. Which brings us to the 29th of April, 2014. At the time, these tweets seemed to come from left field. It was more than obvious who the tweets were directed at, prompting a response from Casper. The lines were drawn and the friendship died that day. This was war. May 25th. AKA posts this. May 2014, AKA posts this. At this point on AKA's part, it wasn't subtweeting anymore. Casper actually had to reply with this. AKA has removed all tweets dated before 2018 probably because of the current situation, so I'm not able to find Instagram posts or tweets by him before 2018. However, I can safely say AKA was trolling Casper on a regular basis. Casper would always take it in stride online. We skip to the 2nd of July, where Casper releases his next single on radio before he releases it online. Pull my game. I told my story and made a fortune, AKA's favorite rap. I guess I made it on the Forbes list. AKA would quickly go online and start posting these in response to hearing the song. The tweets were meant to seem indifferent to the lines that were dedicated to him. Casper would then go on radio the next day and say this. Good point. I think you guys have taken it to a new level. I mean, back in the old days, you'd normally just go into the street and throw a few punches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now it's getting I mean, handled over Twitter and on your album. I'm, I mean, I'm from the hood, so it's possible. <laughs> I'm from the hood. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if I mean, we hope it doesn't get to that point because it's just music now. But, you know, egos are egos. And you don't know what, what might happen, you know, when you treat, explain that people forget that I'm actually from a rough neighborhood, you know. I'm actually a thug. Which neighborhood so, is that? I'm from Muntiwa. Muntiwa, that's like the most dangerous part of Mafi gang. Okay. That's where I'm from. And I grew up like, I grew up with thugs, you know. And so now, when someone tests me and disrespects me like this, you know, I get feelings and you'll never know what's happening. You know? Whoa. They wouldn't see each other or be booked to perform at the same venue until the 15th of August, 2014. August 13th, 2014. Live Amp would release this promo out to the public. Dark, dark, shibbles, I'm shibbles. Over half a million downloads. I'm shibbles, dark, dark, shibbles. A multiple award winner. The biggest hip hop rivalry Mzansi has ever seen. One night, one stage, 
Cash, aka and cast by your best this Friday at 9 p.m. only on SABC One. Santi for show. Hashtag like that. We'll only focus on the four people who are important to the story right now. Casper, a.k.a. Spike, who was Casper's road manager at the time, and Prince Ngembe. A little backstory on Prince. He started out as a friend of the Ali S, being one of the organizers of the Fresh to Death or White parties. From the information online, organizing events was his come up. He's clearly from the same north circles judging from his tattoo, indicating he had a privileged lifestyle growing up. AKA and Prince, along with a few other people, arrived there first to the Urban Brew Studios in Randburg. Casper and Spike would arrive soon after. AKA would be set to perform Run Josie while Casper would perform Puma Gim right after. Backstage, Casper would go to the bathroom. AKA would walk in with Prince right behind. He looks over at Spike and asks him, where is he? What's with that shit your boy was talking? Casper, walking back from the bathroom, meets up with Prince first. Prince says, oh, so you're a thug, while pushing him. Casper moves Prince's hand replying with don't yeah, push me. Push, push, Prince push. would retaliate by drawing a gun and pointing it in Casper's face. The mood got very serious in the building. Casper would look at everyone in the room and calmly walk out. <laughs> 